Good afternoon. I'm very, very excited to be here in Portugal. This is my third time I live in the US. Um, and what I wanna talk to you about is my experience in life. I work mostly with corporate clients and how I run a process to make them more conscious about clothing, the importance in clothing, and also how they can have wardrobes that are more sustainable and they can do campaigns, not only in the procedures they follow in the company, but also in the way they dress. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I started working for banking. I have a degree in finance when I was very, very young. And it was very difficult for me to start working in a corporate bank who was growing all around the world. I was very young. I was in the training department. And I noticed that when I start making a little bit of changes in my wardrobe, in my communication skills, and also in my nonverbal, I was able to get a little bit more credibility and authority. So not only I was training people on the technical aspects on the products on the bank, but I started training people in interpersonal skills and it was working. So this bank was working and buying branches all around the world. So I had the opportunity to work with 36 different cultures and understanding how these principles can work in every country. And it was very, very, very excited to see how you got, you know, a bank or a, that it was from another country and they were buying the whole branches in the banks in different countries. And you see people that were very capable, they very intelligent, very enthusiastic, very creative, and they were not able to keep up the position because in the way that they express themselves, the way they communicate, the way they dress, it wasn't reflecting their potential. So my mission on life was to be a translator from people and make it coherent with their potential. And, you know, I worked for the band three years and then I start my own company is um, Style Innovators and Executive Presence Innovators. And I realized, right, that this process was not only something that I actually experienced. This is an institute in New York and what they do is take different topics of innovation for companies and how they can take people who are in an entry level position to grow up as CEOs or directors or companies. So it's a little, it's a leadership organization who find and do a lot of research about this topic. And it was very interesting because they say, today, if you want to have somebody in a company growing up in a leadership position, performance, working very hard, or having a sponsor inside of the company is not enough anymore. So they did an amazing research with 5,000 executives, right? With different global companies. And they asked them, tell me, if you're gonna promote somebody who just started your career, or somebody who have been in a management position and you wanna promote it to the sweet suite, what are the things that you consider? There were 10 skills. And then at the end, there were only two that they were the most important ones, technical and interpersonal skills. And then they did a research again and they asked them, okay, which one of these two is more important, the technical or the interpersonal? So everybody, Harvard University got involved into this research and they say, it's gotta be 50 and 50. It's fair enough. People need to know the technical, but also they need to know about the interpersonal skills. Big surprise, the results of the 15% the technicals, 85% the interpersonal skills. So the conclusion for this research, people is higher for the technical skills, yes, but they get fired for the lack of interpersonal. So we all know somebody that is brilliant, is a diamond, but they are sitting on a table on a business meals, and every time they speak, <laughs> you know, there is some, there's like, it's embarrassment, they don't know how to express themselves, or sometimes 
you know, it's, it's the three things, it's the three pillars, appearance, behavior, communications, skills, no verbal, first impressions, all of that is very important. So I got very passionate about the topic and my mission was to help people to be coherent about it. So we're gonna go through the five steps, be passionate with me, we're gonna get to the sustainability of fashion, okay, and image and clothes, but taking people through this, through this process help them to understand that clothing is an important matter, okay? So first, clothing is a language. That's the first thing. Every time people look at you, they are trying to understand you. I hate the word about clothes. I mean, judging people is not about that. It's they are trying to understand who you are. Where are you coming from? What are your goals in life? Let's do an exercise. I want you to find the PowerPoint icon in this screen. When you find it, please raise your right hand. Do you find it? I mean, it's, it's kind of fast because you look for the icon, right? Now I want you to look for the Microsoft Excel icon on this screen, right? It's a little bit more difficult. Why? Because our brain understands pictures. We become more visual to the years. Okay, so we find things more faster. We understand things a little bit faster when it's a little bit more visual. So when we don't have too much time, the brain goes for the visual things. So clothing is a way of communication. That's what it is. So when somebody comes and say, hey, um, we, don't, we shouldn't judge people by the visual. Yes, I agree. That will be the ideal world. However, it doesn't work like that. Our brain is trained in two seconds to make decisions and to take decisions about somebody. So it's a way of communication. Who you are, what are your intentions? How much respect you have for others? So clothing communicates in the same way that symbols do to us. Mm -hmm. So they have a big power to change the way we feel, the way we act, and the way people treated us. You go to a networking event. That day, you have a very rough day. You didn't have time to change. You got there, and you feel insecure, and this is exactly how you act. You don't feel comfortable talking to people. When you put a little bit more effort on your image, something changed on you. So you feel more confident. You speak in a different way. Every scene had consequences. So the language of clothing is specific, it's persuasive, it's impactful, and the most important part is the total silence. Just like Isabel told us, right? It's a nonverbal communication. And we have the ability every day to communicate wherever we want. You are free to communicate you know, clean, you wanna look clean, you wanna do dirty, you wanna do frumpy or very attractive, you wanna wear recycled clothes or clothes that are new and they're gonna send a different message. So every piece of clothing in your closet is a little word for a full sentence. Every day you have an inventory of words in your wardrobe and every time you're choosing a piece of clothes, you're sending a different message. We got obsessed with psychology of dressing, right? And that's, that's something that I'm very passionate about. It. We have to start doing it because we start working with anchors in the news and also little TV series. So if you see a play or if you see a, ne a Netflix series, when you see somebody coming on the screen, in two seconds, you have to guess, oh, this is the investigator. This is the criminal. This is the innocent victim. So psychology of clothing, you change one little thing, you change the total message. So we all have a story to tell. So you see a play and every time you see somebody coming into the scene, before they say a word, you already have to guess what they do in living. So that's what the role of clothing is. It needs to be able to say what are your intentions. So I'll tell you a story. So this is a girl. She just finished college. She became an architect in, in, uh, in Chicago, there's a lot of architectures. 
and um, her father died one year before she, uh, she finished college, right? So when she started working for the firm, she got all the respect and everybody on the company know her because she was brilliant, very creative. She organized a tour in Chicago, you know, walking through the buildings and explaining the whole history. That's how I met her. However, every time she went and talked in front of clients, it was very difficult for the client to believe that she was able to accomplish the whole project. She, she was lacking a little bit of lack of credibility. So when we're working with her, right, the first thing that we ask our clients is, what do you want to project? How do you want to feel when you dress? Because dressing is not putting a uniform to anyone or putting something that is going to create a custom for you. No, no, no. That's why we are very careful when we work with politicians. Because we have politicians who come to us and say, I want you to make me look that I'm somebody who can change the world. And he's a liar. He, I mean, he's not an unethical person. We don't do that. It needs to be a reflection for the inside. Okay? So she's like, I want to look brave. I want to look strong. And I want to look that I'm in control. That's the main thing for me. So by doing some changes, right? And it's everything. It's also the communications the skills. We're going to talk about appearance right now. But it's the hair, we need to soften the makeup, we need to choose the colors. Every color has amazing psychology behind, low contrast, a modern look. So after we change all of these parameters, we were able to change the message and say, you know, she looks brave, more in control, and now she is matching her capabilities, is matching her skills. So now when she's going in front of a client, she's able to have these emotions. And in the first 10 seconds, the client is able to get them, okay? So clothing give you permission to experiment emotions. And clothing has an incredible power to create moods and tell people something great about you. Like, I don't know anyone who, you know, you feel sad or depressed and you stay in your pajamas your whole day. At the end of the day, you feel more depressed. When you change in the first 10 minutes of the day, you feel more productive. Something happens, something changes inside. So clothing had that power. This is a um, family therapist. She's like, every time I see a client, it takes me 30 minutes for them to open up. The message she was projecting was too strong. She's working with teenagers, right? Moms. So she needed a more empathic, friendly, more caring image. We soft everything on her, right? And after she saw the results, she's like, this is insane. How like clients are open up with me a little bit more. And, you know, this guy, it was a lot of fun. He was from Germany and he wanted, he was an evangelizer from an IT company. An evangelizer is an IT. Right now, image depends a lot from the industry. Every industry is completely different, right? And we couldn't put it on a suit or anything because every industry, especially IT, is more, it's more like a relaxed image. So she, he wanted to, and she was very smart. Five minutes talking to him and you are like, wow. But he's like, when I'm in front of an audience and it's 5,000 people, it's difficult for me to get that wow thing after 30 minutes. Right? So we change colors, we, we remove the glasses, we put a gothic, and think about a movie. Every time you're watching a series, especially like, like one that is involved with lawyers, when you want somebody that is very authoritative, you wore a lot with the beer, right? And it's very interesting to see. So wearing clothes and accessories that match a mood will intensify that feeling that you want to project. So I call this inside out congruency. That's how I call it. So there is nothing superficial about clothing. It's a reflection of who you are. So we are all free to say that we can wear whatever we want. Yes, but we need to be smart to use clothing as a tool to reach your goals. Number three, how you dress or act will create an influence in your future and create your reality. In two seconds, 
people, when they see you, right, they will guess about your age, your status, your personality, your race. That's something and a natural function from the brain. Every time, and it's, and it's, it, and it's having a lot of research about this. You have the left and the side, side of the brain. When you met in somebody for the first time, the left side is acting immediately. Am I in front of a friend or an enemy? And I'm going to invite this person to my place, yes or no. And I'm going to hire, yes or no. The brain doesn't have too much time. It has to take a decision. Okay? If I have these two people in front of your door, you are a woman. You choose the first one or the second one, right? Most of the men would choose the first one. Right? I mean, it's, the brain works like this. So it's, it's not about judging. It's just a natural function for our brain. It's called neuroscience. So the neuroscience of first impressions. So people is like, I don't like to judge. You do it every day. You're buying a house. You see the outside. You don't like it. Most of the time, you're not going to give the opportunity to go inside. So, so it's, a, it's a natural function of the brain. Today, we got very involved in digital personal branding because first impressions 95% of the time are made online. You're looking for a profile, you see the profile online, you see the pictures and you already took the decision after 90% 90 of the people already took the decision. So the picture becomes something very important and it's just the numbers. Every time you're gonna apply for a position, you, are, you are, have your own company, your clients, the first thing they are gonna do, they are gonna Google you. And everybody in today is online. You're doing an interview, right? The most effective way to get a job is if you made a video resume. So we're training our clients right now, every time somebody finishes an MBA or college, to make a video resume and they're getting the jobs. Because in a video, it gives me a lot of credibility. It's a very unique way to sell yourself, right? So, and there is different styles, right? It's not about everybody's gonna be the same and you cannot keep imitating somebody else. So you want to be more friendly, more warm, and that involves what is your essence, what is your personality, and what is your industry. So when you are working in digital personal, personal brand, you have to choose. We do a whole test with clients and say, how do you want people to see you online? Okay, and the type of content that marketers say is the most valuable, number one is video. Second is images, right? Stories, maybe they work, but not as effective as video or images. And it's no longer enough to be good in what you do. You must to be able to talk about yourself. So that's why social media is a very important part of your branding today. And, and we call it the holistic branding. Who are you outside of your work? Because that gives you a lot of credibility, right? So you are going to hire an accountant. You go into his social media. He's a sport man. That means that he's very disciplined. He's responsible, right? He has a family. It means that he's more stable. And you take the decision based on this holistic image. So personal branding needs to be an amazing support for your career. Because you will be Google. And why is this important? Because we decide, we te people take decisions based on these first impressions. I want to engage, yes or no. I like, I don't like you. I trust you, yes or no, right? That's why it's important. So our clothes and grooming affects how we think, how we feel, and how we behave. And the most important part, how others will think, behave, and feel against you. And, you know, I consider, you know, I always say to my team, you know, we're very lucky because we help clients to do this magical transformation, helping them to understand the psychological effect of math uh, or clothing. So I consider myself an impression management or a strategist, right? Who's able to assist clients to project the image that is authentic or is credible. And the most important part, cohering with their values. So everybody send a message. We help people to send the right message. Number four, beauty pays. And this is the title for an amazing book. This is an economist 
for the University of Texas. This is, he was fascinated by this. The book is very interesting. I'm gonna tell you exact, I mean, like a little resume from the book. He's explaining how he opened two branches of cell phones. In one of the branches, he had people uh, who were very careful of creating the best version of themselves with grooming, clothing, and all of that. And in the other branch, people who didn't care anything, you know, about their grooming, they were frumpy, you know, they didn't care. And for every five cell phones that they sell in this branch, they sell only one cell phone in the, from the other branch. So he's like, this is insane. Think about something. When you are in front of someone who has a harmonious way of dressing or it, it looks respectful in the way they dress, you feel more comfortable. You are in a room, you know, and you're working and there is not enough life. It smells very bad. You can't work in there. We are called to be surrounded by some things that are beautiful. This is why you went to the mountains, you went and you feel better. So same thing happened with appearance, okay? And, and you know, this research shown that attractive people are, have greater opportunities in life, okay? That's what it says. And there are four variables that talks in first impression. You need to look credible, likable, attractive, and powerful. Every time you're creating a first impression in two seconds, these four things needs to be done. You can be very powerful and very authority, but if you are not likable, people feel that you are very arrogant. But guess what? You can change that with nonverbal communication. Or you can be very likable, but people perceive that you have no authority or credibility on the matter. So it's fascinating to see this neuroscience behind first impression. And every single big CEO use these principles. So, I mean, this guy, he sold cars. You know, it couldn't be that he only wears something that, no, he goes from level to level, matching the audience, thinking about the message that he needs to send. Sometimes he's more likable. Sometimes he's more approachable. Sometimes he play being more authoritative and powerful, right? And for every industry, we can go on, on with different ex examples and we can see this. This is the CEO from YouTube. Same thing. He go for different levels. He changed things and he changed the message. So I consider myself a translator for co congruency from the inside to the outside. And, and, and it's fascinating to see the science of psychology. Just the contrast. The contrast is the difference between the colors on the clothes. The higher the contrast, the more authority you look. This is why every time you see a debate, a political debate, look at the contrast that the, the politicians are using. Red tie, black, I mean, white shirt, like a very dark suit, higher contrast, very authority. A medium contrast, a dark color with a medium color, it makes you feel a little bit more approachable, more likable. It's very comfortable for the eye to watch these colors. And a low contrast is a guy for a politician. She, does, she doesn't feel or she doesn't want to be noticed. Okay, so you change the contrast, you change the message. It's fascinating. You change the color and every color has an amazing power of sending a message. So you change the color, you change the message. And for men, the same thing. You change the tie, you send the message. We created an app. We were, we were so fascinated for color that we created an app. And every time, you know, this app determines what are the best colors for your pigments on the skin, eyes, and hair. And then in the back of every color is the psychological message that you send, okay? Not only is the color, it's also the tone. The darker the color, the more authority. This is a gray suit. The, the lighter the color, the more approachable it's gonna make me look. So every, every time you change something, the pattern, the, the thicker the lines on the pattern, especially in a shirt, the more, friendly, the more approachable, I'm gonna look, right? The thinner the lines, like in, in this example over here, the more formal, the more authoritative is gonna look. You change something, you change the message. There is a professor in the University of Boston who make a whole research about glasses. 
And he's like, I want to understand what is the message that you send with glasses. No glasses, very likable, very attractive. Glasses with no frame, attractive, successful, and trustworthy. With a frame, you are intelligent, successful, and distinctive. It's insane. So sometimes, you know, you have a student. He just finished college. He just finished an MBA. He's going for an interview. We put him on glasses, and it's like he has a little bit more experience. He read a little bit more books. Something happened. The brain reacts like this. It's an insane game for the brain. Ill-fitting clothes that are super big, everything is big on you. The, the job, you know, everything. You are not in control. Poor grooming, you don't have attention to details, right? Even the lines on the hair. This is, is fascinating. When we made this research, we had doctors, lawyers coming with two textures of hair. A straight hair with verticals, right? More powerful. Horizontals, more friendly. Circular, more approachable. Diagonal, very dramatic, more authoritative. It's insane. You change the hair, you change the message. These are two people who are giving the news, right? It's amazing how in first impression, news is full of four impressions. So the second one looks more credible for some reason. And we did a research, 10,000 people when we did the contest, which one looks more credible, right? So number five, you are what you wear. Every time you put on a piece of clothes, you are part of an industry that is polluting and killing the planet. You have an incredible power to reduce this pollution. So we all have this power. The fashion industry income and revenue is $1.5 trillion today. Are you wearing clothes today? Raise your hand if you're wearing clothes. I hope so, right? So we are all part of these problems. We are, part of, we are all part of this amount because we are consumer. So knowing that clothes send a message and also, right, is something that matters in our environment, we need to be conscious about this. Anna Winter says, fashion is a reflection of our times. Fashion can tell you everything that is going on in the world, just with an image. And it's true. After the second war, there was no money, right? And they made a restriction on the manufacturing. They say, hey, if you're going to produce a dress, you can have dresses that are lower to the knees, and the dresses can have any pockets, any ruffles, nothing in excess. It needs to be simple because it was reflecting, right, the poor economy at that time. Today, we live in a fast world, fast food. We want fast everything in our phones. Clothing is also fast fashion. That's what we're looking today. So, and, and it's crazy, you know, because we buy 60% more of clothes today, but we are spending less money because we are buying clothes that have a lower quality. We are dressing almost in plastic. So we buy more clothes and we have nothing to wear, right? And we have to be conscious about this fast fashion because it's not free. I'm gonna tell you our experience. We had an invitation um, almost seven years ago to work with a company from, who was manufacturing in India. So they took us to India and the project was to create a collection for a spring with colors that works for everybody, okay? So these are called universal colors. And these colors have the same amount of warm and cool, and everybody can wear those colors. So there were seven colors. We made the report. And then our job was to go to India, work with the designers, and decide with the fabrics what will be the collection. When I got there, I wanted to talk to the people who were sewing the clothes. And when I got to the floor, it was girls that were from 12 years old, 14, 13, and when I sit down with them, they were like, we work from 12 to 14 hours a day. We get paid $2 a week. And sometimes when we have a little bit more need, because we are the ones who support, most of them support their families, we spend the night here. So where, where do you spend the night? Right here, just below my sewing machine. When I saw that, I couldn't keep working for this company. And I say, you know, this is not free that we're getting clothes that are so cheap. We have to be conscious about this. 
because we had to see the tag. Is 60% cotton, 20% sweat, and 20% blood. So we have to be conscious. What can we do? We need to take care of your clothes, try to buy a better quality because durability means sustainability. You can transform your clothes and you can recycle clothes. And this is exactly what we're doing with clients. So you can recycle the clothes, right? We make something that is called swam parties between corporate clients. So every client who comes to this party, they bring 10 pieces that they have in their wardrobe and they haven't wear in one year. If you don't wear it in a year, you're not gonna wear it anymore. So they came with these clothes and we sent them, right? Oh, I want this, this red jacket. You are not using it anymore and I like it. And it worked. People love this experience and we were trying to um, um, make it more sustainable. You can, every time you buy something, it's important that it goes with five pieces that are in your wardrobe already. So we start working with clients and teach them how they can invest very smart, right? So we make something and this concept is called capsules. So two bottoms, three tops, you mix and match it and you create more outfits. With women, you can do even more. So four bottoms, three bottoms, five tops, and you start mix and matching the clothes. So we make 18 combinations, 36 combinations. The client is going shopping or is going to a secondhand store. Every time they buy something, they, you have to think about that capsule jar you put in your closet, okay? So you add a white pants, you're gonna add 12 more outfits. A navy top, 12 more. A camel cardigan, 30 more. A scarf, 12 more. You can make 102 new outfits with 12 pieces of clothes. So it's not about spending too much. It's, a smart, it's investing in a very smart way. The more current your clothes are and not trendy, the most this capsule is gonna last. So you can buy something and, and it, it can last for five years. And I'll tell you a story. Um, I was working for a tech company and this company wanted to be more sustainable. So I started a huge campaign in social media and I was, doing a training on interpersonal skills for the, um, for the C-suite. There were 12 women there. And I said to them, listen, what is, if you want to do this campaign, which is amazing, that in every procedure and every product, you are trying to reflect more sustainability for the company, why you don't start a campaign with your own wardrobes? So we go to a secondhand store, that's Goodwill, and then we buy outfits from there. And one of the directors came to me and said, Lula, every time I go there, I never find anything. So no, thank you. And I said, okay. So I got 10 more days for training with them. So I, every day before the, I mean, one day before the training, I went and choose an outfit. And then I was counting how many times people told me something nice about the outfit and I was writing them down and also the price. So I was able to make, right, three, and I also, you know, every hat is a compliment that somebody make on my outfit and how much I spend for the day on the outfit. So we have six, right? And then 10. They went crazy with that skirt, which is actually was a size bigger than me. But, you know, everybody loved it. So I started using it more and I make different combinations. At the end, when, when they asked me at the end of the day, where do you get your outfit? And as I'll tell you, the last day. Day number 10, I'll tell everyone where I get my outfits. When I tell them where I get it and how much I pay for it, they were like, I can't believe it. So you, it's just about being creative and being more conscious about your clothing. So you care about the environment. You need to start making a campaign with your own wardrobe because your wardrobe is a wave of communication. So this only proves, right? We all try to simplify, understand others around us in order to make sense in our life. We make assumptions in different information that is more based on your instinct. Why we do that? We have basic decide to understand the meaning behind others' appearance and behavior. So we try to interpret and explain them in hopes of better predicting future behaviors. That's the most important part of, uh, uh, clothing that send a message. This is an amazing author for psychology of clothing. 
And I love everything that he, because it makes so much sense every time he say it. So clothes are not something that are superficial. You need to wear clothes that matter. Thank you so much.